Welcome to another session of GibbsCam videos, GibbsCam version 2023. Today we're going over enhancements 15 through 18. So let's get started. Our first one is going to be cutting load variation. So the various machine tool manufacturers calls this different names. Gibbs calls it cutting load variation in which we uh, turn on the code to uh, adjust the variable speed for the spindles on turning. Uh, DMG calls theirs alternating speed. Haas calls theirs SSV. Nakamura calls theirs chatter canceller. Akuma calls theirs Navi. And I don't know about Deuce on a Mazak. I'm sure they have it, but I could not find anything on their sites. But it's pretty straightforward. If I bring up my process here, it's just a checkbox in Gibbs cutting low variation. So this is just going to either turn it on or off. And Gibbs is going to put in the code in your uh, G code to turn that on or off. Usually the variables are set in your machine how you'd like to. Uh, uh, vary the speed and it's either using an M or G code or a combination of both to turn that on or off for your machine so you can see it on the roughing and of course we can do it also on the finish cut on the contour so you're really not going to see anything here on the rendering so much as just uh, your standard turning there as we normally would do but uh, that's what variable load cutting load variation is what it's called. I have a few short videos of each manufacturer so you get a better idea of what it's doing. Alternating speed frees operators from tedious trial and error adjustments and quickly reduces vibration. No sensors or other special equipment is needed. diameter of 1.12 inches. Just to make sure we've got some decent chatter going, we'll take several more cuts until we're down around an inch diameter. Our test bar is now chattering quite seriously. The LTD ratio of this setup is now 16 to 1. Now let's see how this cut does when we turn SSV on, cutting again at a diameter of 1 inch. So our setting 165 is equal to 125, and we have our setting 166 at 6, giving us a 250 RPM swing every 6 tenths of a second. And again, we can hear and we can see the chatter has disappeared. The finish on the shaft using SSV is significantly better than the one running at one single speed. Some people like to run with smaller values than we do here, like a 165 value in the 20 to 50 range, combined with setting 166 numbers between 10 and 30. But here at Haas, we found that the best starting point for these two numbers is a setting 165 value between 100 and 200 RPM, combined with a setting 166 period value between 5 and 20. Some experimentation will probably be necessary to find the best values for your particular part. So this is the end of the machining. If you look at the surface, you can see the chattering has occurred. The next step is to turn on the chatter canceller. The sound is already different. You can see that the auto-cutting sound has disappeared. Of course, not all chattering can be stroked, but I think the future of this function is easy to try. For example, if the chattering is controlled by chattering counselor, we can find out it's a problem that can be solved by changing the spindle speed, and then we will start to find the optimal conditions. Skip a little bit, finish the process. Now, let's see how the machine surface actually looks. It looks better than before. Now, when we zoom in, the result is like this. With the chatter canceller on, mark of turning appears clearly.
So you can see by the different videos of different manufacturers, they all do about the same thing, vary, vary the uh, spindle RPM uh, to keep the chatter down on the machine tool. So our next enhancement is going to be volume turn active chip thickness control. And so on this toolpath, this is the volume turn, and it's made to use a uh, button nose insert, as you see here, my number five there, button nose insert. And it varies the feed rate according uh, to the depth of cut, what it's taking. Now, volume turn works really well for, uh, say, wider grooves where you can use a button tool, and it removes the material much faster than using a grooving tool to take multiple steps in there or using a uh, 55 degree to go one way then another 55 degree to go the other way also works very well for ID turning where you have grooving tools that need to go up inside a, a thin wall and uh, you can take just small cuts in there to reduce the pressure on the tool as well as the chips inside they're getting clogged inside the ID but if I turn on the utility markers you can see the different variables for the feed rate if I just click on one of them you can see that's uh, 3 thou there then as the chip load changes it goes to 2 thou and 2 thou down there and you can see it varies there 2 thou as it's entering, you can see it's up to 12,000. So this is really handy for, uh, I'd say, uh, grooving more than what they're showing here. But uh, this is the active chip control thickness. So if I bring up the process here, you can see it's down here, active chip control thickness. So you have a target thickness, minimum thickness, and a maximum feed rate. So you can adjust all that. And it's similar to uh, volume mill. Uh, in which the volume mill uh, adjusts the feed rate depending on the cutting condition. So this is the same thing, but this is in turning now. So let's show you the toolpath here, what it's actually doing. And this works well for harder materials as well, since you're using a button nose and that's pretty much the strongest insert as far as edges goes. And it automatically does the arc in, arc off. And by the way, this is just for roughing, not for contour. It's only for roughing, just like volume mill is made for roughing, not made for finishing. So our next enhancement is number 15, elliptical turning inside diameter or outside diameter. So here's our elliptical part here. As you can see, it's not on center line. It's elliptical inside and outside. So the key to this, let's bring up the operation or process. You have your entry and exit lines, of course, uh, exit radius if you'd like to do that, your tolerance, the pitch you'd like to do, surface feet per minute, and then you have your start and NZ there as well, and then any extensions you'd like to do on that. And of course we can do ID or OD, so the uh, I have my length of the part there, and this is the center line of my spindle, so the key to uh, getting this to work is select the inside of the part, make sure face selection is on, right click and do select tangent faces, that selected everything that was tangent inside there. And then you need to hold control and select the center line there and then you'll see the do a button appear. So if you click on that, you'll see it processes pretty fast. You can see it down there. This is real time. I didn't skip it. So it's pretty fast there. So you can see that toolpath there. So when we run the rendering, now you can do this either way. You can have the C-axis be rotating 
while the X and Y moves, or you can have the C axis stationary and move the tool around in the circular motion, the live tool, of course. So let's start this. And we're going to rewind it. So the first operation is with the C axis rotating, and the tool is staying stationary. And we're moving the X and Y, of course, and Z as we're spiraling in. But you can see it also moves the Y axis. It, the Y axis just doesn't stay in the center because you always want the center line of the radius you're cutting uh, in line with the tip of the tool. So you can see the Y axis moves there. Speed this up a little bit. Gives you a little bit better idea. Now if we fast forward to uh, operation number two, this time we're going to use a live tool with the C-axis locked. So here you can see the C-axis is locked and we're moving of course the X and Y and Z as well as the rotation of the spindle. Rotate this around just a little bit so you can see. So that is called elliptical turning, like I said, inside or outside diameters. So our next enhancement is number 16, face threading and scroll threading. So in this enhancement, we're doing face threading. So here's my part here. Let's bring up the process. Let's first bring up the tool. Right here, I'm just doing an Acme uh, thread, eight threads per inch. You can see what the tool looks like there, sitting in this direction, of course. And if we bring up the process, a few things have changed here. Uh, this is similar to the OD and ID threading. You have your run in and run out and your start point an endpoint on there, your uh, pitch in uh, threads per inch, or you can type in the millimeter value and it'll convert it up there in the threads per inch if you'd like. And of course here we're doing front face and you have your Z start point, uh, end point, and the thread depth. Um, so you can choose uh, some of these other options as well, balanced or angle if you'd like. But if we run this, first we're just gonna face off the part and then turn the OD. And then this is uh, number three face threading. Now I haven't run into this too often, but there is uh, many cases if you're doing uh, steam flanges or flanges that need to be, have a flat face, uh, they usually require a record player type finish on the front so this would come in handy for that as well especially if you want to repeat the threads to get the deeper depth on there you can do that very easily with this enhancement so that is number 16 face threading scroll threading our next enhancement is number 17 variable pitch threading So here you can see my part, of course. Same one we used for uh, face threading. And if I bring up the process here, this is the area for variable pitch here. And if I just hold my mouse over there, you can see that's the uh, starting pitch there. And of course the next one is end pitch. And this one is the change in pitch between the start and the end pitch defined. So turn balloons back off they go away and of course you have your run in run out just like you normally would and this is about the same as you would on uh, normal threading there so if we run this toolpath here you can see we have the variable pitch from the beginning 
transitioning to the uh, wider pitch at the end. And so that's number 17, variable pitch threading. So our last enhancement, number 18, is multi-pitch thread from shape or just multi-pitch thread. As you can see, we have our part up here, the same one you've been looking at for the other threading processes. But this one here is a little bit different. You can see this is the shape that we're going to cut right here. Let me bring up the process here. So you either have from shape or from parameters. And you can have, uh, if you want multi-pitch, of course, then you can define the segments. So if you click on the define the segments, you can see here you can define uh, the segment one, two, three, four. And as you do that, you can see it, the start pitch and end pitch, and then transition to the next one and the next one. And of course, the next one here. So if I show you this, let's run this. So we have the shape here, another one, and another one again. You can see it varies the pitch along there. Now, and I don't encounter this too often as well, but I did have a customer we did that was uh, manufacturing eye screws for the climbing industry. And this one uh, had the same pitch, but it varied uh, in the shape of the thread. So it went up. Uh, actually, it went from large to small and then back to large again. So there is uses for this in different uh, industries in that, but this is a variable, variable pitch by thread shape or just uh, multi-pitch thread and you define the parameters. So that's all the enhancements uh, for now. And stay tuned. We'll show you more enhancements coming up in the next video. Thank you for watching.